Hi there, <clears throat> Hi there Jason. Thanks for doing this today. Um, tell me a little bit about two things. First of all, your thoughts on you've played six playoff series here the last two years. You've won four. You've exceeded everything the Amherst have done for about 20 years. And on top of that, you developed players. You didn't just develop guys in a losing atmosphere. How significant is the whole process of the Rosines and, you know, Kulik's and those guys develop and got these opportunities? Uh, it's 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 been a lot of fun first and foremost for the organization for all of us uh it's great to see it's it's uh it's what we set out to do um uh, to create a situation where we're developing players in a winning environment you know that's ideally what you're looking for you know development is the is the first and foremost uh, goal obviously we want our young players uh, take steps to be the best they can be to get to the point where hopefully eventually they you know they're doing the same thing for us in buffalo but to have it happen the way it has the last couple of years uh to also include the the winning and 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 specifically in the playoffs to have those experiences of you know understanding the highs and lows and everything that goes into playoff series and um the preparation that goes in you know just the mental and physical toll that that it takes uh, on the players and on the group and to learn to stick together and fight through that it's just invaluable for us so it's really exciting uh disappointing when it comes to an end because you just want to keep going but um you know when you step back uh just really really proud of the group and just very excited for how it helps us moving forward and the other thing i wanted to bounce off of you was the decision to go with Matt Savoy in the second game. Um, there's so many pros and cons with it. Obviously, the organization wants to see him. He had just finished his season, so he was still in game shape. He's a number one pick. The matchup wasn't great, as it turned out, compared to what would have been against Syracuse. How do you reflect back on putting him in there in the middle like that and what it did to the lineup and just how he you know, tried to get through those two games? Yeah, well, we, we didn't take it lightly. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, we have big plans for, for Matt and the organization, and um, we think very highly of him. But, you know, also there's, there's uh, you know, part of the equation is certainly the, the group uh, that has been battling all year and specifically in the playoffs and, and not wanting to disrupt that. And, and so it's, it's, a, it's a decision that we didn't take lightly. And, and, you know, it's consistent with, I think, how we've approached things in this organization just in general. Um, everybody knows that we're, uh, we've got that two-pronged process going where it's development and also hopefully, uh, you know, in a winning environment. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, we felt, uh, you know, it was, it was good to give him a taste. Um, and, he, and he will learn from that, um, you know, in a major way, already has, I'm sure. Um, these kids, even just from watching it um, and being around the team, they learn as well. Um, so, you know, it's a long season of hockey, I think, for, for, for Matt, for all these guys, but, you know, um, to jump into the conference finals, I personally thought he did very well, you know, considering the, the circumstances and, you know, that's a big jump. And, uh, you know, that was the discussion that was had with him, you know, after, you know, and, and things he specifically uh, mentioned, uh, just the speed, you know, the speed of the game. It's, you know, you don't have as much time as you have in junior. And, you know, that's obvious, but um, until uh, a kid is put in that position, he doesn't feel it for himself. So we think that'll pay dividends for him going forward. Um, you know, he's talented enough where it was, uh, you know, a decision that we made to put him in and see what happened. And like I said, I thought he did well, but we had other players that are, that are sitting, waiting on the sidelines that, you know, have contributed all year, um, you know, that, uh, that we needed to get back into. So we're trying to juggle all of, all of that, um, I think, and, you know, um, I think in hindsight, we would still do the same thing. You know, it's, it's still a process where we want to give our guys a taste as much as we can. And, um, you know, uh, wish we were able to take this series, but, uh, the experience for the group as a whole is, is one that we're, uh, you know, we're really grateful to have gone through that. And, and we think it'll help all these, all these players moving forward. Thank you, Jason.
Okay, Dan, go ahead. Hey, Jason. Um, I know we talk so much about the young players and the prospects and the developing. And I wanted to ask you this because I know he won't answer it, but how important and how great of a job did Seth Apper do to be the calming voice to blend that developing while also wanting to win the striving to win and, and just blending that all together. The, the job that Seth Appert has been, and, and it seems like he's been the perfect guy for this job. Cause I know he won't say anything about himself. Yeah, no, I, 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 I can't, I'm glad you asked that question. It's a, it's a great question. And uh, you know, I can't say it enough how, uh, how impressed uh, we are, you know, as an organization with the job that, that all the coaches have done uh, with this group here, um, you know, in particular the last couple of seasons. But um, Seth in particular as a head coach, uh, I've been around a lot of head coaches at this point in my career. He does, he is easily the best at balancing what you just uh, referred to there, that, that, you know, that delicate balance between development and winning, um, you know, the, the pushing, uh, pushing of the right buttons on a daily basis, um, you know, and, and dealing with each individual uh, and how each individual responds and figuring out ways to, to motivate um, not only, you know, the group as a whole, but individuals within that group. Um, the ability of the coaching staff and Seth in particular to deal with, you know, 30 plus players around, you know, and, and paying special attention to every one of them. Um, I, I, it's a, it's a really special environment, um, that I certainly can't take credit for at all in any way. The coaches are here on the ground every day, building that relationship with the players from day one. Um, it's just like the last question that Mike answered about Savoy coming in. There's a trust level there between the players and the coaches in particular um, that they understand, even though maybe they might be a little frustrated at times if they're out of the lineup or if they're maybe not getting as much ice time. There's a trust level that if they put in the work and they do what they're told and improve and take steps to get better each day, uh, that the coaches are going to reward them. And, and that's the process we, we really want throughout the organization. We want, we want the guys that want to be here, uh, that want to be a part of our future going forward, that come here each day with the intention to get better. Um, and the coaches make that happen. And they've just done a fantastic job. I mean, just nothing short of a fantastic job. The, the growth of certain individuals from start to finish is remarkable. So it's... Uh, it's really exciting for us, uh, uh, you know, in the organization to watch uh, to watch it unfold. And it's, uh, you know, it's just been a two years in a row of the same thing, where virtually every player on the roster has gotten better. Just, just amazing stuff. So it's really, really encouraging. Uh, Seth always talks about how culture is always evolving and it's always changing and it's always something you have to work on. And he said that the minute you think you have it figured out. You, it, you don't have it and you got to build the culture back up again, but doesn't the end of last year and the end of this year, aren't they pretty big tent poles of what can be sustainable here in Rochester and what the big picture is in the entire organization? I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, quite honestly, I, you know, we went into this year again, um, you know, having a successful year, the year before, uh, but with the players graduating to Buffalo that were graduating, we, you know, didn't know what to really expect, you know, another e even younger group this year. And, uh, you know, so, you know, the goals were the same, uh, but to, to be standing here today, you know, knowing how much further this group went uh, than last year's group, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's amazing, honestly. Uh, but yeah, it's, this is what we want. We, we're trying to build sustainable success throughout the organization. So, um, you know, it's it's a common sense point to say that it would probably start here first as our young players are moving up and developing. But yeah, I mean, we, we very much hope we're on the cusp of, of this sort of thing in Buffalo. And really just moving forward, what we're ideally trying to do is is have this type of success year after year at both levels, you know, ideally you just continue to 
to develop young players and, and, and have that culture in Rochester and in Buffalo of expecting to be in the playoffs each year and, and, you know, taking a run at a championship. That's, that's what this is all about. You know, I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to build an organization uh, that wins championships. So this is a couple, uh, you know, this is part of the process and it's really encouraging uh, the last couple seasons we've had here. Thank you and congrats on a hell of a season. Thanks. Don, go ahead. Don? There, the unmute button is the one you have to push, right? <laughs> Good to see you, Jason. Great job. Great job again this year. Uh, uh, you've uh, done something that, that I've been looking for for 30 years, and that's the, the system you guys have put in place the last couple of years to build from the ground up because we know how important it is to have winners here before you really can have winners there. So uh, kudos to you and, and Kevin and the rest of the crew. Uh, I want to talk from a little bit from a different side and that the we all talk about the young guys, how they developed and what they've done and the ones that have moved on to Buffalo. But as you said, I, I think, and pretty much everybody uh, the last couple of years has said about the importance of the older guys teaching the younger guys how to play. So just some thoughts, maybe, because they they don't seem to ever get mentioned. Some thoughts on on the older guys this year. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I'm glad you brought it up. It's, it's an essential part of what's gone on here. No question. Uh, you know, it starts, starts with uh, the leadership group. Um, obviously, I can't say enough about Michael Mersch and what he brings to the table on a, on a daily basis. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not just Mershy. I mean, you, you, you've got, you know, Ethan Prowl, you got Sean Malone, you've got uh, players like Mason Yops. Uh, you know, it's, it's, we're trying to find uh, veteran players that understand, you know, what it means to be a pro and take pride in passing along the lessons they've learned over their careers to date to the young players we have that are just starting out and uh you know that's on and off the ice that's you know in ways that we don't even really see or hear about uh because you know we have the type of people that they just take care of things on their own to make sure the group um individually polices itself you know I, I, what i mean by that is you know naturally you're going to have some young players that haven't really figured out what it means to be a pro like come to come to work each day but don't really have an idea when the season starts out how much work goes into this and how hard they need to push themselves to get to where they need to to get to the coaches do a fantastic job of of laying that out for them but it really requires this layer of, of veteran players that we have here uh, to carry it out. So, um, and then you just look at what they do on the ice, helping our team as well. They're stabilizers, uh, is the way I would refer to it, uh, both on and off the ice. Um, and they're absolutely a, an essential part of the success that's happened, obviously, um, you know, with this, with this team the last couple of years. So, um, you know, we wouldn't, Honestly, we wouldn't have accomplished uh, what we've accomplished uh, on, uh, on the ice without them. Um, and it's that balance um, that we've been fortunate, I think, to strike the right balance between, you know, that presence, that veteran presence and that youthful energy. Um, and like I said, the, 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 the net result, the, the improvement of all players, uh, really for two straight years, I mean, it's, it's hard to, to not find improvement in every single one of their games um, over the course of the year. And that, that's out of the ordinary, but it's, it's, it's really exciting. So um, I absolutely uh, agree that that group, um, you know, deserves a huge amount of the cre credit for, for what's gone on here. And then uh, I think you, you talked about the balance there. Do you feel you have the right number then, uh, the right number of veterans in comparison to the young guys, do you feel you want more veterans or fewer, or, or what are you thinking at this point? Yeah, I think it, it just depends. We try to evaluate, you know, the group and what we've got coming. And, you know, I mean, the way it is just with, uh, 
the amount of draft picks we've had and, and continue to have, um, you know, the young players are just going to keep coming into the organization. I think that's the plan and that's what we're excited about just to con- keep building that depth throughout the organization. We feel that that's really what separates the elite organizations from other organizations is, is that depth. You know, you need, you need talent, but you know, you need, I think what people underestimate is how much depth you need within, within the organization um, to really build what we've talked about, that sustainable success. So um, we're continuing to try to do that. So we, you know, we reevaluate things, you know, and now is the time to do that um, in the off season and in our planning for, for the, for the next season. Um, but yeah, we've, I think we've been successful the last couple of years striking that balance and we'll look to do that again. It, off the top of your head, do you know which ones of the veterans will be back for next year? No, that's something that we're, we'll still obviously take some time. Um, when you're fortunate enough to play into June, it kind of jams everything together a little bit. Uh, but that's the nature of our, our business. Um, you know, there's a lot going on at this time of year. But, you know, we've obviously had thoughts, but we haven't had some, you know, formal meetings that, that usually take place where, you know, we get input from everybody and, um, you know, we don't have as much time as maybe you do if you don't make the playoffs, that's for sure. But, um, you know, this is a great scenario that you look, uh, look to go through. So, um, you know, but, but yeah, it's, it's the time of year now where we evaluate, um, you know, in my experience, sometimes it's, it's good to take, you know, a few days just to kind of decompress a little bit. Um, and we'll circle back and we'll have lots of meetings and, and, you know, planning for next year, but that's to be determined, but you know, it's, it's, it's tough because, you know, we have so many guys that have played so well and there's, you know, um, you don't normally carry 30 players during the season. So you have to make some decisions and, and we have some young players moving in, uh, new young players moving in, uh, next year as well. So, um, we'll go through our meetings and we'll try to do the same thing we've been doing, which is, you know, find a group that, that can compete on the ice and help our young players grow and, you know, continue that development process that so far we've been really encouraged by. And just one final thought, your, your, uh, your thoughts on the fan support in Rochester. Yeah, it's just absolutely incredible. I, uh, um, uh, we are so appreciative of the fans here in Rochester, um, just in the larger area, just basically Western New York in general, but you know, with fans coming from Buffalo, the fans here in Rochester, um, the support of the team has just been absolutely fantastic. And, um, it gives you chills, honestly, in, in the building, uh, when it's, when it's jam packed like that. I know our players, our coaches, uh, all of our staff, uh, appreciate their support so much. Great job. Looking forward to another exciting year next year. Outstanding. Thanks, Tom. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, Jason, you know, um, in the three years since Seth, uh, Seth came, uh, to the Sabres, what sort of changes do you think there have been in the overall culture um, down at the AHL level? Yeah, it's tough for me to speak to since I wasn't here before. You know, I came in at the the tail end of uh, that first year for Seth. The, it was an odd year, that COVID year. Um, but uh, I, I can speak to my personal experience in, in other situations like I alluded to earlier. Um, he has a special way uh, of of uh, being able to connect uh, with your younger players as well as your older veteran players. Uh, he's, he's just been a lot, uh, he's coached uh, for a long, long time. He's been around a lot of hockey players and he, he, uh, he's got a special way of really connecting with them on a personal level and pushing them in the right way uh, to get the most out of them on and off the ice. Um, you know, it's, it's really, uh, it's really been uh, exciting to watch uh, because I, I feel like he was an absolutely tremendous hire for this organization. I can't take credit for it. Kevin hired him before I was here. Uh, I knew Seth from his time at the program and RPI in particular, um, and I was very excited to work with him. Um, you know, he's just a perfect fit. I've said it before uh, so many times now, and I know Kevin has talked about it as well. Uh, but with the two head coaches we have, um, you know, and Donnie Granado in Buffalo and, and Seth here in Rochester, with their backgrounds coming from the U.S. program, it's absolutely perfect for what, what we've uh, been trying to build here. 
uh, you know, building and, and growing with young players. Um, these two are, are head coaches that, you know, want to work with as many young guys as we'll give them. And, uh, and that's, you know, not necessarily a, a common thing among uh, head coaches in the NHL and the AHL. So, um, you know, they're perfect fits and Seth sure is a perfect fit for, for what we're trying to do here on a year in year out basis. Uh, he's just a really good hockey coach uh, at the end of the day. Um, you know, the preparation, the work, uh, is put in, um, obviously he shares the credit with his staff. Um, you know, not just, uh, his assistant coaches, the larger support staff, we're, we're really, uh, um, you know, I'm really personally thankful for you know, the staff that we have here in, in Rochester. It's, you know, that contributes to the culture as well. Um, and, and obviously just the way you treat people, uh, Seth sets the tone, I think, in terms of how he treats everyone, you know, surrounding the team, um, you know, and that might be people on the business side. It's, it's really a group. Uh, collaboration to work together and, and work as a team as a larger organization um, you know and uh, you know it's been a big part of the culture that's been built in Buffalo as well it's 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 something that we're very proud of that that we feel is consistent in both in both places thank you Mike, thank you Jason I just want to go out of the box here for a second what was your reaction to Kyle Dubas's move to Pittsburgh and how would you characterize your talks with them given that it was a different ownership group than when you were previously there? Yeah, no, I mean, I, uh, I think, uh, you know, for me personally, it was great to go through the process. Um, you know, uh, and obviously Kyle is, is somebody with, uh, you know, a lot of experience under his belt at this stage already. So, um, I wish him the best of luck. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, you know, something that, uh, I, I actually talked to people, uh, here, uh, about when I was going through the process is a, a little, little conflicted, you know, to be honest with how excited I am about, uh, what's going on in this organization. So, um, I think what happens is when, when we have success as a group that, you know, individuals like myself can be considered for other opportunities. That's, that's part of what goes on in our business. So I'm grateful for that. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, to be honest with you, uh, this is a type of situation where, you know, I've been working, you know, 25 years now in this league. Um, and this is probably as excited, uh, about a situation as I've ever been in terms of what we can do, uh, you know, moving forward. And uh, the sex success that we, uh, you know, are on a good path toward right now. So, um, you know, that's uh, um, that's probably where my mind goes when you ask that question. It's uh, you know, it's a good experience. Good to go through it. Um, good to get as far as I, I went in the process. Just for uh, you know, for you know, personal experience moving forward. But um, you know, I'm really excited about what's going on here in this organization. 